In this project, I will use follow edge metal part, do my own homemade modifications, combine new parts with old ones, mix my own camouflage shades, experiment and combine different decals, play with the weathering by using oil paints and pigments. All this and much more I use to create the SU-22, so sit tight and enjoy. Let's get started. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Thank you for voting for my next project. The winner is the Soviet built tactical fighter bomber, the Suhoi Su-22 M4 Fitter K from Kozao di Prostyov. This kit is very special for me because it reminds me of my childhood. Let's check out the molds. They are quite decent for an old kit. Penny lines could be a little deeper, but there is something I can do about it. The model also contains a mechanism for changing the geometry of the wings. Parts like wheel wells, landing gear legs, jet nozzle, cockpit and the weapons don't have much details. They definitely need to be modified. The cockpit canopy looks very nice. It also contains parts for the two-seater version of the machine. The instruction manual is a bit weak. For example, it doesn't contain any information about the color of the interior surfaces. So more Google studying. The World Slide decal sheet includes decals for a Polish, Angolan, Syrian and Iranian aircraft. But I think I will go my own way on this. Cool! I think that this build will be a lot of fun. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. Ok, let's start with the build. During the whole building process, I will use photo edge metal parts from the other models. Let's build the cockpit. The ejection seat includes only 4 parts and it's easy to assemble. The cockpit tab has a big ugly molding hole. It needs to be filled up with putty. After drying, I remove the putty with a chisel and smooth it out with sandpaper. Before application, I clean and degrease the PE parts with clear alcohol. For the applying, I use Loctite Cyanide Acrylic Superglue. The Yadar Molo metal parts are great. They are easy to work with. The most work is on the ejection seat. I have to glue like 18 metal parts to it. Next is a front instrument panel. Unfortunately, the metal instrument panel is much bigger than the original plastic one. I have to modify the cockpit tab a little bit. I have to cut out some plastic. And of course, I had to dry fit and adjust the instrument panel several times. On the first time, only with one half of the fuselage and then with both. The fit is almost fine, but the instrument panel is still a bit wide. I'm going to have to narrow it down for a perfect fit. After some more dry fitting and cutting, the fit is great. Finally, and the front cockpit canopy fits also, I'm satisfied with the result. Before painting, I also glue the PE metal bar jet nozzle. The cockpit is ready for painting. Now I unite the surface with Mr. Surfacer 1000. 
For the cockpit parts, I chose the Mr. Color 334 barely grey color, and for the ejection seat, C2 black. The metal parts have very nice details of the avionics panel and instrument panel. I decided to paint them by hand, and of course, the throttle lever is made out of thick plastic stick. I also paint some tiny additional details like push buttons, switches, and awareness lights. On the ejection seat, I paint the seat belts, metal buckles, and other small details. Now I highlight all cockpit parts with a dry brush and add a dark wash. The wash can be easily removed with an emerald or the less thinner. The other model metal parts accessories have nice details of the multifunction display. I paint the display with a bright green color and glue the clear bars with a PVA glue. Next, I work on the Clan 54 laser rangefinder. I had to cut some plastic to fit the clear part. After that, I paint the target designator with an aluminum color and glue the clear part window with a PVA glue. Before gluing the fuselage together, I glued the cockpit, jet nozzle and the Klein 54 laser rangefinder. As for the cockpit, I rather glue only the cockpit tap first, and then I will gradually add parts like the instrument panel and after gluing the fuselage, also the control stick and ejection seat. The laser rangefinder, cockpit tap and the jet nozzle are glued in place. Two fuselage parts together. For an old school kit, the fuselage fit is good. I'm surprised. To hold the parts together, I use my Rebel modeling clamps. After gluing the fuselage together, I glue the control stick and the ejection seat into the cockpit. The photo edge instrument panel sits very good with the front instrument cover. I'm happy that there is no gap between them. 
For a nicer look, I am blending the feet with a black paint. Next, I work on the wings. The fit is good, but the gap is too wide for my taste. I will fill it up with putty. The fixed part of the wings have no pegs. I had to progress slowly. To achieve a good fit, I again helped myself with rival modeling clamps. I didn't add the mechanism for the wing sweep. The fixed wing fit is so tight that there is no use for it. All I have to do is change the wing sweep by hand. The wings hold their angle beautifully. Unfortunately, the fixed wing fit isn't the best. I will have to use a lot of putty. Before filling the model's gap with putty, I glue the heads-up display and the front cockpit canopy. The model is ready for filling. For filling up the gaps I use Mr. White Putty from Mr. Hobby. It will take some time for the putty to dry. Meanwhile, I will work on the fitter's landing gear, weapon hardpoints and weapons. The model's short-range air-to-air R60M missiles are too thick and inaccurate. I will not use them. Instead, I replace them with R60M missile from Edward. The kit includes more weapon hardpoints, so I will equip the model with two laser-guided H-29L air-to-surface missiles from my Italeri Suho SU-34 fullback kit. Under the fuselage hardpoints, I will add the two big PTB-800 external fuel tanks. And I will also use the kit's B8M rocket launchers. The weapons have also some fit imperfections. I must fill these imperfections with putty. Now for the landing gear. They have visible molding lines. These lines must be removed. I want my model to look more than ordinary. I often add some hydraulics and cabling. For this procedure, I will use lead, copper and metal wires. The lead wires are a very good accessory. It's very easy to work with. I also add some hydraulics and cabling for the wheel wells. For some lead wires, I had to drill some holes.
when I'm already upgrading the landing gear and the wheel wells, I also work on the landing gear covers and wheel rings. I decided to use the Yadar Model B parts. They are much better than the landing gear covers from the kit. To fit the PE parts, I had to cut out some plastic from the wheel rims. After that, the applying was fast. The putty dried out after 5 hours. I sent down the excessive putty under water with a P600 and P1000 sandpaper. The model's Nudelmann Richter NR 30mm cannons doesn't look that good. And the pitot tubes also. I decided to replace them with new ones from Master Model. I gently cut out the excessive plastic with a sharp knife, sand it and drill out new holes for the cannons. I must admit that the pitta tubes assembly was tricky. All metal and plastic parts are very fragile. If you decided to add these accessories to the model, be careful to not apply too much pressure. They may bend, or worst in case, break off. And here is the difference between a model master pitta tube and that from the box. But I need these kit pitta tubes. I need to thin them down into a needed diameter cut them and drill out holes for the new ones. After it's done, I glue them to the fuselage. Before painting, I mask the cockpit canopy with Italian masking tape, add a layer of mixed humanic liquid mask, mask also the cockpit and the air intake with a sponge. For uniting the surface as a primer, I use Mr. Surface 1000. The first step of the camouflage painting is to apply a pre-shading. Mostly, I use a black paint for this step. I spray the paint in every panel line. To make the pre-shading stand out, I dilute the color of the camouflage and I apply it in a ratio into 1 to 4 of leveling thinner and slowly in fine layers. I still have some black paint in my airbrush. To save a lot of time with other details like the wheels, I also paint them right away. Now for the metallic parts. The engine cover on the belly of the aircraft, mechanism of the wings, chaff and flare dispensers are painted with aluminum and a mix of metallic and grey color.
the metallic paints make a lot of mess. For a better work with the metallic surface, I'd rather auto spray it with a glossy varnish coat. Now I mask the metal aluminum parts with a masking tape and prepare for the main camouflage painting. I am Slovak, so I always wanted to have a Slovak Air Force SU-22 in my stash. It really brings back memories. As a child, I often saw these machines fly low over us. Of course, other machines like MiG also flew, but it was always an experience to see this roaring monster with my own eyes. I decided to paint the machine Yellow 2702 of the 33rd Fighter Bomber Wing placed in Malatsky Kuchynia Air Base from the late 90s. I don't have the correct paints for this camouflage. I must mix my own shades from paints in my stash. Likely, they are quite alike. A great bonus! As a template, I will use my 1272 scale SU-22 UN3K from Models with Paintings menu. So the color shade will be much easier to mix. Before separation of Czechoslovakia, all SU-22 machines have very similar, if not the same color shades. After the separation, a small part of 18 single-seaters and three two-seater machines were delivered to Slovakia. Later, some machines had slightly different color of light green and light brown, but that's not a story. The dark green color is a mix of 60% of Gunze Sangyo Mr. Color 136 Russian Green, 30% of C55 Kaki, and 10% of C303 Green. The light green shade was much more easier to mix. It's a mix of 70% of Mr. Color C303 green and 30% of C113 yellow. The chocolate dark brown color is a mix of 60% of Mr. Color C42 mahogany and 40% of C3 red. The light sandy brown color was much more difficult. It's a mix of 70% of Mr. Color C43 wood brown, 20% of C1 white and 10% of C3 red. Before painting the lower part of the model, I mask all necessary areas with masking tape. It will help me not to overpaint the camouflage with the light blue color. The light blue color shade is a mix of 50% of Mr. Color C74 Air Separate Blue and 50% of C1 White. It took me some time to mix all these shades at least to 95% to the original. Before that, I failed a lot. So if you have the mood to build a Czechoslovak fitter, this color guide can help you. There is much more masking to do. I want to paint the areas of the electronic sensors, cannon flash color, wheel wells, landing gear and the jet nozzle.
looks like the most of the airbrushing is done. Finally, I can remove all masking tape except the cockpit. Before sealing the model with a varnish coat, I paint all details with a paintbrush. Mostly on this model, these details are hydraulic hoses, electric cables, cannons, antennas, navigation lights and much more. After it's done, I seal the model's paint job with a glossy Mr. Color GX100 Super Clear 3 varnish. For this model, I will use the Slovak Air Force decal sheet from Air Design and technical stances from Printscale. Both decal manufacturers are excellent. Their decals are very strong, do not tear or fall apart. With a wet paintbrush, I apply some water on the area of the decal placement. I carefully apply the decal on the surface using tweezers and my finger. Of course, you can use a wet cotton swab instead. Next, I carefully press the decal to the surface and remove all water and air bubbles from the decal using a wet cotton swab. To do a better adjustment of the decal to the surface, I use softener chemicals like Revel Soft or Mr. Mark Softener. The Revel Softener is less aggressive, so I will use that. All decals are applied. I seal them with two layers of glossy varnish coat. Now for the weathering. The first step is the black wash application. With this step, I highlight all panels. The excess wash can be removed with emerald thinner. For the second step, I must apply a matte coat. I will use oil paints and pigments. Here I need to take inspiration from other machines as well. Not only Slovak, but also my Czech and Polish brothers. The camouflage is slightly weathered from conditions such as sun, rain and snow. For the faded effect I use a white oil paint. I thin down the oil paint with some emerald thinner. The emerald thinner quickly dries out. With a dry cotton swab and a flat paintbrush I paint the thinned oil paint with the surface. It's very time expensive work, but it's worth it. And here you can see the difference. The left side of the model is weathered and the right side is not. But don't worry, I'm not finished yet, there is still much work to do. Now I create hydraulic oil leaks, fuel leaks and dirt using burnt umber and lamp black -like oil paints. First, I apply a small amount of paint on a thin paintbrush. And then, I carefully and smoothly blend the oil paint with a flat fine hairbrush. At the end, I repair some areas with a dry cotton swab. The third step are stress marks. Over time, stress marks from high speed flying also began to appear on some panels. 
these places often peeled off and had to be repaired frequently. To highlight the stress marks I just added a drop of black or white paint to my camouflage mix. The fourth step of the weathering is pigmentation. For this model, I will use European Earth and Black pigments from AK. With the European Earth pigment, I imitate the aircraft's dirty underbelly, wheels, landing gear shaft covers, and the external PTB 800 fuel tanks. I use the black pigment to imitate dirt from the onboard cannons. You can also use the airbrush technique, but I have pigments, so why not use them? And the last step of the weathering is sponge chipping. With this technique, I imitate scratch marks and much more peeled off camouflage. With completing the sponge chipping procedure, I seal the weathering with a layer of Mr. Color GX114 Super Smooth Matte Varnish. Finally, I unmask the cockpit canopy and prepare the model for the assembly. Some of you ask me which super glue do I use. Mostly I use the Loctite Superbond Universal Glue. The assembly was a little bit tricky. The external hard points and the weapons fit wasn't the best. I had to cut some plastic. After that it was fine. The horizontal stabilizers and the landing gear assembly was without problems. Next, I glue the S8M rocket launchers, the short range R60M infrared air to air missiles, laser guided H 29L air to ground missiles, and fuel tanks. I had the idea to place the H 29s on the other wing hardpoints. Unfortunately, the missiles and also the fuel tanks are a little bit off scale. I had to switch them. Missiles under the belly, fuel tanks under the wings. I also added small adjustments to the cockpit canopy. The adjustments are cockpit mirrors and locks. Just a little bit of paint was needed. At the very end of the assembly, 
I glued the cockpit canopy, glue more tiny antennas and the pitot tips. Alright, the Kozaoli Prostio 1272 scale SU22M4 is finished. I will definitely exhibit the fitter to my other models of Slovak Air Force aircraft. Although it's an old school kit and has its imperfections, I enjoy it very much. The kit can be built without major interventions and does not prevent modifications. I hope you like this video build. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment or share. If you are interested to see more of my work, Join me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm trying to post an update at least once or twice a week. If you want to ask me something about the build, feel free to leave a comment. I will answer your question. Thank you for watching guys, see you next time and here's the final reveal.